so I kind of messed up. I was working on a shooting mechanic, just to show somebody how to do it, and then I had a character in a blank scene, and the rest of it was just kind of a blur. And when I woke up, there were enemies, randomized rooms, obstacles, upgrades, a health system, and so on. And I didn't record footage for any of it. So here we are with the basic game, and we're just going to jump into it. Since I made this game while I was asleep, apparently, it's missing a lot of polish. But the first and most detrimental thing for this top-down view were the drop shadows. Enemies didn't have drop shadows, they were just flat images on the screen that I had made with Kenny's Creature Mixer. Which is a pretty fun tool. I had originally made the enemies using Kenny's Creature Mixer, just to make them quickly, because I didn't think this was going to be an actual game. But, now that I'm making an actual game out of this, I had to decide whether or not I would continue with this, or make new art. And, while I think it would look better with new art, I don't think the game taking longer to make is a good thing for me. So, I said screw it, and decided to continue using Kenny's Creature Mixer, so that I could make the enemies faster and spend more time making the game than making the game art. But they needed drop shadows, because when you shoot at them, you're not sure where they are because they're a 2D image on top of what's supposed to be a 3D world. So the drop shadow needs to be there to give you a better way to guess where the collision mask of the enemy is. So I took the walls of the room, and mocked up a little shadow that kind of made sense with the angle, and then I started by applying that to the ghost enemy. And I thought I was going to have to go in and tediously change all of the images in-game, but then I realized that if you change the base file without changing the name of the file, it just uses that file instead. Which makes total sense, and I don't know what I was thinking. But, I did have to go through and change the points and the collision mask because the ghost itself was bigger than before. And then I added one for the character, and I didn't really like it. I don't know why, it just felt wrong for some reason. Maybe I've got it down too low, or the shape isn't right or something, but it just didn't feel right in-game to have it move along with the character. Maybe it'll grow on me. Then I added the drop shadow to the imp, who is a big tanky character, who attacks by jumping up in the air and landing back down again. And so when they jump, the drop shadow shrinks, and I think that looks pretty convincing. And then again I had to change the imp's collision mask and points. And I really like the drop shadow because for Z-ordering, the center of the drop shadow gives me a perfect point to use to determine what thing is where in the Z-order on screen. So when you pass the drop shadow of an enemy, that's when you go behind them. And that makes a lot more sense. And then it came time for the spider, where I realized that they were kind of tall and didn't really look right. So I shortened them, and gave them a drop shadow, and put them in game, and now they feel too short. So I asked in the Discord, and people said they were fine, so I guess I just got used to them being tall. And now that that was done, on both Twitter and YouTube, I put up controversial polls, asking people what they would choose if they had one choice when it came to variety in a game. And on both polls, the vast majority of people picked enemies. And because apparently I'm a hack, the first enemy that I thought of was a loot bag enemy. You know, that enemy that you see in a bunch of different games where if you don't kill it first, it's going to run away after either stealing something from you or just denying you from getting a bunch of points, or gold, or whatever. So to get this enemy, I pressed randomize a bunch, and then did some fine tuning. I decided this enemy would have three states. Running away, getting hurt, and teleporting. So if they're not getting hurt or teleporting, they're running away from you. And if they're teleporting and you shoot them, they'll go to hurt, and then switch back over to running. And if you don't shoot them in time when they're teleporting, they will poof away. And I had originally submitted this game to GDevelop as a template game so people could make a game based off of this one. And to do that, it had to go through a review process, where we spent a bunch of time making it more optimized and expandable. 
And I'm really happy we did that now because being able to just go into the object and change some variables for the drop chance of health orbs and how much money they drop made it a lot easier than hard coding it for each enemy. So now if you kill this thing in time, it drops a guaranteed health orb and five points, which is five times more than you get from most enemies. And that can be tweaked in the future after some testing. And at that point I ran out of ideas. And so I went to the Discord for help with coming up with ideas for enemy types. And we came up with a few, but the one that I decided to go with was a beehive or enemy spawner type enemy. So I went to the creature mixer again and got the most default looking character I could. This one being for the beehive, this one being for the bee. And then using Don't Starve's beehive for reference, I converted this into this. And then because this looked a little bit too much like a penis, I converted that into this. Much better. And then I converted this into a B, trying to retain the same kind of style as the original enemies by making the colors flat and using very little shadowing. And for both of these, I just copied down code from other enemies and replaced bits that needed to be replaced. And I set it up so that the bees will try to swarm you by picking a random position around the player and going to that position and then attacking. And to make them stand out from the other enemies, I made it so that the bees die in one hit. And what I first tried with the beehive was to make it so that when you shoot the beehive, it spawns bees, which made sense to me. But in practice, this means that people will methodically shoot one, kill the bees, shoot it again, kill the bees, shoot it again, kill the bees, which is boring. So in the next video, cliffhanger, I'm going to have to change that to make it more engaging. Hopefully I can get this game done in, let's say three videos. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, be sure to do the whole YouTube thing. And a huge thank you to my patrons. Because of them, my coffee cup is full and I can even afford sugar. As always, the links to all the cool places that I hang out are down below, and if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there.